Welcome to the end of NRF 17. It's our day three wrap up, and I'm here with Alicia Fioroletta and Adam Blair, and we're gonna just share our insights on what we've experienced today and kind of a high level overview of um, our experience from NRF this year. You know, on a high level, from, from my perspective, it was a pretty busy NRF, and I'm not as worn out as I ordinarily am. I think just because I was just was so busy, I'm too, I was too busy to be tired. Um, so I think that's I think that's good for the solution providers who are here and the retailers as well. I think they, they it's been a positive experience and can probably expect a decent year in retail. So that's you know from from a very high level. Um, one of the one of the topics that I'm feeling most strongly about right now is again a high level topic, but it's about um, everyone needs to be thinking about improving that store experience from the store associate out. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, I, we hear so much, again, about being overstored and retailers are making some bad decisions about how to handle that. Closing stores, uh, reducing workforce, and that those are not the answers. And I think um, really focusing on making sure you have strong brand advocates every day in the store um, and who are excited to be there and are also armed with the tools they need. And so it's not just about... Um, you know, what we did a hundred years ago, um, because we knew our local community, you have to incorporate technology into the process now. So um, companies like Theatro and Honeywell, who I met with today, are, are you know, mobilizing, um, making, making the technology in the store more convenient so the store associates can be hands-free. They can be easily interacting with um, other employees um, in this, that store or in another store. Um, Honeywell has incorporated voice into some of what they're doing in, in, for the store associates so that and they've been able to save 50 to 60 percent time um, using voice to record data versus stopping to type something onto a tablet or a mobile device so you know it's the the, con the convenience of some of the technologies that we're learning about I think are going to help um, all retailers improve that customer engagement experience so that's you know using technology to create efficiencies, to motivate employees, to impact customer engagement. So that's that's my high level mm -hmm. um, view about what's going on and what should be going on in retail today. Mm -hmm. um, I think that might be a little bit of a lead into Adam, some of the things that yes. you wanted to talk about. Yeah, um, well, uh, I also uh, saw some wearable technology that impressed me. Uh, not so much, I mean, the technology was impressive as well, but it was well thought out in terms of how an actual store associate would be using it. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, wearable, I believe, a excuse me, a Samsung watch. Um, the It's in partnership with Fujitsu, and the people from Fujitsu were saying, what the retailers like about it is, people can't drop it like a, like a mobile device. Uh, it's literally always with them, and uh, it it's, uh, leaves people's hands free, as you were mentioning with the Atro, that's a big thing that if you're going to be able to help a customer, I mean, they, they were giving examples of like convenience store and grocery store applications of, you know, needing a manager override or uh, uh, restocking something. Um, a kind of interesting issue that I wouldn't have thought of, but they, they have dealt with is because the watches, there's only a, going to be a limited number of the devices in a store, they're going to be shared with different employees. So they have to be sterilized between each use. Hmm. And they so they're also marketing. Uh, it looks like a looks like a pizza oven, but it uses UV light and it sterilizes these things like a dishwasher between uses. Um, so I, I thought that was that was interesting and, and again well thought out in terms and of what they're doing. Subsequently, fewer sick days, I suppose. Yeah, right? Hopefully, fewer <laughs> you sick know, days. It's all connected. <laughs> yes, yes. It's it's literally something that is next to your skin versus another piece of technology that you wouldn't uh, isn't as intimate. <laughs> um, and also what you were saying about how retailers are, are needing to uh, embrace innovation and, and, and look at that. Uh, I had a conversation with Bill Lewis from Capgemini who talked about that uh, he thinks retailers are going to be looking at lots of smaller projects rather than big, major IT back-end types of things. He, he had a couple of phrases that I liked. It's not about fail fast, it's about learn quickly. 
uh, which I, I thought, you know, fail fast always sounds so, yeah. so bad. It's That's like, a positive spin. Yeah, it's it. a much more positive yeah. spin. And also about um, retailers themselves looking to develop an innovation. Some of them have created innovation labs or outsourced that, but he's saying, if I have the right talent, I can be innovative within my own four walls. So it's kind of importing innovation and, and creating the environment that'll make that work. So that sounded interesting to me. That's great. I want to go back to um, you know a point that you brought up, Debbie, about how there's a heightened focus on you know creating a great in-store experience, obviously, which has been present the past few years. But how how that's done from the associates' perspective? Yeah. Because I feel like in, in all my conversations, the one consistent point that keeps being brought up is you know we we need to have all this great technology to make it more immersive and memorable. But it also needs to be easy from the associates' perspective. Right. It needs to be beneficial. It needs to empower them. But you also don't want them to be jumping through a lot of hoops. So I can't help but think of like the little changes or you know the little developments that retailers can make. And um, you know I had a really great meeting with the folks at Time Trade today, and they provide scheduling solutions for um, for retailers. Um, one example being Sephora. So they do makeovers, they do classes, you know, to teach people how to contour. That eventually leads to sales opportunities. But they power the reservation experience. Mm. So it's great for the consumer because they have, you know, a set time, they can go into the store, get the service they want, it's immersive, it's great. They have that one-on-one -on -one time with the associate, but then the associate gets, you know, an alert, here's an appointment that's coming up, here's the customer, and because it integrates with the retailer's back-end information, whether that's CRM, or you know, whether that's you know, their, their um, sales data or marketing automation, they can get information on the shopper, sometimes mm. their past behaviors, if it's integrated with the client telling solution. So they're literally just opening an app, and you know, they get all the information they need to provide that great experience. So as soon as a customer walks in, it's, Oh hey Adam, good to see you again. Like mm. let's let's go head on back for your appointment, and we'll right. we'll get through this as pa as fast as possible. Um, but then the the other connecting point there is this whole idea of the service economy, right? Which you know is still in its early days, I think, and it may not always be you know it can't always be applied to every retailer. Mm. But I think more companies are trying to figure out. Okay, we have these great products, we have these great brands. What can we provide the customer in terms of solutions, both online and in stores? Um, and it ties to this whole notion of you know, the service economy and a marketplace experience. And there, there's this company I met with called Miracle that is really interesting because they create that marketplace experience online. And you know, when I hear marketplace, I don't make think of Amazon marketplace, right. which isn't necessarily the case because in their world, it's you have the brand products, you have those partners that sell, you know, supporting products or a longer tail of products, but then there also can be services tied in to create that comprehensive marketplace experience online. So again, I think it's still early days. I think a few retailers like Best Buy are rolling out, you know, offering products from supporting retailers, smaller niche companies. But then they're also offering solutions for installations or you know, having people go to your house and offer consultation services. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting, I think, to see how not only digital and store are coming together even more, but how services and you know, consultations and more relationship building offerings are coming into play and, and really bringing those relationships to the next level. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely where if you're talking about trying to compete with Amazon, Amazon, you know, doesn't have that personal relationship, and so if you can do any, right. whatever you can do, you know, to establish a better personal relationship from the even from the online perspective, um, sure. you know, that's going to be really relevant moving forward. So, mm -hmm. yeah, good insights. And just to pick up on one quick thing, that we, what you were saying about um, ease of use for associates—that's Absolutely. something I was hear hearing all the time from lots of different yeah. people that any type of application or uh, 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 functionality needs to be connected to all the related functionalities and in one uh, um, uh, one delivery vehicle, right. uh, if at all possible. 
and not making people jump through hoops or go to seven different tabs even within the same tablet. They won't use it. They just won't, no. <laughs> I wrote down convenience, convenience, convenience. Yeah. Yep. I think that, you know, that's, that's, that covers it all. It's that pretty beyond much location, covers. location, location. It's convenience, <laughs> convenience, convenience. Okay. All right. Well, thanks to all of you and the, the, our other editors. And it's been, uh, it's been a busy couple of days. Um, with that, I think uh, Retail Touchpoints out in <laughs> 17.